Right. So let us see today one new topic which is single phase transformer. So this is one of the most important device in electrical system. And first let us have some background about this device and after that I will introduce what is exactly single phase transformer, what is its function, okay. So let me recap about the magnetic fields, magnetic fields, usually these magnetic fields are invisible in nature like these are invisible, invisible but we can feel, but we can feel it as like air, air is not visible but we can feel the air. In the same way these magnetic fields are not visible but we can feel it. How is that? You might be heard some kind of experiment that in your high school or somewhere that if you take a sheet of paper, if you take a sheet of paper something like this let us say a sheet of paper and if you will fill on this, if you will put some iron fillings iron fillings something like this some randomly some iron fillings these are iron fillings these are iron fillings something like this and in some case that if a conductor is passing through this paper as like this downside also and if current through this conductor is zero, there is no change in these iron fillings. But if there is any current passing through this conductor as like this, let me say if there is any current which is equal to let us say some 5 amperes or 10 amperes, whatever it may be, which is not zero. Now as a result of this what happens is that all these iron fillings will try to align into some kind of circles, some kind of circles as like this. You might be seeing this in some uh, like physics experimentation in high school or somewhere and these iron fillings will try to align into circles form as like this. It may not be exactly circle but it may look like as a circle like all the iron fields which were randomly aligned previously now becoming some orderly aligned. And what is the cause of that is that whenever a conductor carries current then the flow of current through the conductor will establish the magnetic field around the conductor around this conductor. A magnetic field is established. As a result of that magnetic field, so if invisible magnetic field is established around this conductor which is in this direction let us say and in nearby place if some iron filling was there something in this orientation. As a result of this magnetic field, this iron filling also will try to align into the, into the magnetic field direction. So this iron filling will try to align into this iron uh, magnetic field direction. So this is the effect of the current flowing through a conductor. So these are the general observations made by previous various scientists, great peoples. Now what we need to conclude out of all these things is that we should carry forward our understanding from them that if a current carrying conductor is there, it establish flux around the conductor. It establish flux around the conductor. Those flux can also be called as a magnetic fields. Okay. So now let me bring some more points that so this this is one point that current carrying conductor establish flux around the conductor. Is this clear? This is the concluding statement out of this experimentation that when when a conductor when a conductor conductor carries carries 
a current of a current of i amperes then then magnetic magnetic field lines field lines will establish will establish around the conductor around the conductor this is the concluding point out of this experimentation that is one thing now second thing is that if we have if we have magnetic fields now i'll write short form mf magnetic field then these magnetic fields may disperse in generally as like this for example so if i'll have a coil of this shape let me put up the coil as here by taking simple structure this is a coil now if this coil is carrying a current of i amperes now you can imagine see here how the magnetic field will take place inside this coil is that as soon as current pass through this coil around this conductor everywhere field lines will establish as like this blue color everywhere everywhere in this conductor just try to see everywhere as like this around this conductor as i told you here just as like this so everywhere these field lines will establish around this conductor now if you take the aggregation of all these things field lines how does it look like for all these number of turns is that it will look like something like this these are the magnetic field lines around this coil blue color one is at each location but all putting together it will try to look like a big magnetic flux lines are established around this coil as like this in all sides as like this clear so now try to observe that these magnetic field lines are passing through the air also just you can see observe that so now the generalized thing is that the generalized thing is that if i have a coil as like this which is carrying a current of i amperes and we know that around this coil magnetic field lines will establish which may pass through even this air in too many flux lines may be there as like this just this is just our imagination that flux lines may establish something like this around this coil now if i'll do some kind of thing that if one more coil is brought near to this place let us say i have a second coil as like this i have second coil as like this now if i'll bring this second coil to close to the first coil close to the first coil as like this now try to observe what happens in the second coil you can imagine this is let us say first coil 1 1 dash so let me write current this. will close let me let me tell you about the coil number 1 1 dash this is coil 1 1 dash in coil 1 1 dash in coil 1 1 dash what happens is that the current is creating the magnetic field current is creating the magnetic field so let me write here somewhere mf means magnetic field okay hereafter you should understand current is creating the magnetic field this magnetic field is linking linking with with coil 2 2 dash let us say this is 
today. Now see that we have a conductor as like this. We have a conductor. The flux is associated with the conductor already. Just a reverse phenomena going to take place. Like if a field lines are established, if a conductor is placed inside these field lines, then opposite effect going to take place. That a current will pass through this conductor. Previously what happened? Current has created this magnetic field. If magnetic field was there already, if we place a conductor inside of that magnetic field, then somehow it tried to create some current. So let us understand that in different way here as like this. So this linking, the magnetic field which is linking with coil 2 will create, will create induced EMF, induced EMF where in the coil 2. This induced EMF which is because of the current flowing in coil 1 we call as a magnetically, I will introduce that word little later. So instead of that just let me give you the flow that what is going to be happen. This induced EMF, this induced EMF will try to produce the current, will try to generate, generate, generate the current, current in coil to two days. This is the hidden phenomena. Just we said that once flux is linking with coil 2 to then directly current may flow through this. That is what we said. But in, in intermediate stage there may be some induced EMF. That induced EMF is causing for the generation of current in coil 2 to days. So now try to observe in this way we can transfer the power from one circuit to another circuit without any direct connection. See, is there any electrical connection between coil 1 and 1 dash and 2 and 2 dash? There is no electrical direct contact but still current is flowing in coil 2 to 2 dash. This is what mutually coupled phenomena. Mutually coupled phenomena. Now, let me introduce one more thing that the Faraday's law of electromagnetic principle or Faraday's laws. Faraday's law. So, in a straightforward, I, I, I would like to say in a simple way that EMF, EMF will be developed inside a conductor when, when EMF will be developed inside a conductor when when there is when there is a relative velocity relative velocity velocity between between conductor conductor and magnetic field that means there should be some change between these two either conductor should move or the magnetic field should change. If anyone is changing, that creates the relative velocity. When there is a relative velocity between these two items, that is conductor and magnetic field, then it produces EMF. So, this induced EMF is usually proportional to rate of change of the flux or field lines and which can be written in generally as E is equal to minus N into D phi by DT. So I don't want to go much details of this equation like minus sign is because of the Lenz law and that concept might be already covered just I want to give the basic idea of what is Faraday's law. Okay. So when there is a relative velocity between conductor and magnetic field so, where is conductor? Here is just simple coil. First coil is producing the magnetic field, green lines. And second is the coil which is a 2 to dash may move left and right or the magnetic field may move but coil 2 to dash may be kept stationary. So, in these two cases, 
even if these green lines are changing or this conductor is moving left and right, that two situations will create EMF inside this coil 2 to dash. That induced EMF is according to Faraday's law, it is equal to minus N into D5 by DT, where N is the number of turns of the coil, number of turns. Okay, so this is the basic background about the transformer. So now let me introduce the concept of the transformer in this way that transformer. First, let us see what is the necessity of the transformer. What is the necessity? Necessity. Necessity of the device of transformer. I'll write transformer as a TF here after TF means transformer. So what happens in general is that the generation power generation, the power generation will take place in the range of something like 10 kV to 20 kV range. The voltages at which the power is generated is 10 kilo volts to 20 kilo volts. And usually these generating stations are located, located in remote places wherever, wherever resources are available like coal or some wherever wind uh, nature is existing like on top of the hills or some hill area or some location, geographical location. So, these generating stations are located in remote places. And where we have the requirement of the power? At the load centers. At the load centers. Load centers means at where we need the requirement. Like in towns or in villages or in industries. In industries, etc where we have the requirement of power. But these are located far away from the generating station. So what we need to do? We need to transfer this power, transfer this power from this generating station to load center. So what we do is that we will take some towers, big towers. On top of that we will put some conductors wires and we will transfer the power and once it reached to nearby locations of the load centers and from there we take the connection and we will feed it to the load. But the things will not be done in this simple manner. So instead of that there are many things involved in this process. The first point is that you should understand how much power is generated by this generating station. So the power is usually product of voltage and current. And another concept is heat, heat or you can say, right, so heat or energy, so we can write heat or energy, energy as I square into R. Now if you observe that, here try to see carefully that, for these conductors which are located far away from each other, that like uh, between the generating station and load center, these are in terms of kilometers, it's not meters, 100 kilometers, 150, 200, 500 like that. So then these conductors will have small amount of resistance throughout its length throughout its length, small resistance R. Total resistance if I will consider as R. Now see that if these conductors are carrying a current of I amperes, then I square R losses will take place inside these conductor which dissipate as the form of heat, which dissipate in the form of heat, which is the loss component which is the loss, power loss or energy loss. 
So in order to minimize these losses what we need to do is that we need to reduce the current. However, we cannot reduce the resistance of the conductor. Why? Because so some extent we can use like if we use copper conductors that may be lowest resistance may be possible. Then but if we go for some other type of like uh, superconductors we can reduce but the cost will be very very high for that conductor even though those also may have some amount of the resistance so what can we do is that instead of focusing on the re re reduction in the resistance we can focus on the current how so we can reduce the current so that so that i square or loss inside these transmission network let me write this as transmission transmission network transmission network so we can reduce the loss component inside the transmission network by reducing the current so if we reduce the current keeping the power to be constant keeping the power to be constant what we need to do is that if the power if we would like to make some condition that we would like to transfer some 500 megawatts of power from generating station to load center if that is our aim so if current need to be reduced we cannot say that power should be reduced the power transfer capability should remain constant by keeping that we should reduce the current so that the power loss will be reducing so how can we do that if this need to be maintained constant need to be which one power maintained constant if this is constant obviously if current is reducing what shall we do in order to maintain power to be constant the voltage should be let me write here that so this is V into I if the current is reduced then in the same proportional we should raise the voltage in order to keep the constant this in order to be constant then how can we raise the voltage that is what the our interesting phenomena which is the transformer so transformer is a device it is transformer let me talk about the transformer now it is a static device it is a static device which means that it does not have any rotating parts all are stationary parts and what is the function of this transformer is that it will change it will change the level of level of voltage level of voltage like it may change from 10 kV to some 200 kV voltage level 10 kV to 200 kV here then if the power is transmitted at 200 kV obviously if voltage is rising current reduces in order to maintain power to be constant so loss in the transmission network will be low if you transmit the power at 200 kV instead of 10 kV then after reaching to the load center again you put a transformer and you change the voltage level from 200 kV to 10 kV like that so we can utilize the transformer for changing the level of voltage like it may be for rising the voltage or it may be for decreasing the voltage so this is the main uh, important function of the transformer and now let us see what will be the constructional features of the transformer and principle of operation and the induced emf concept okay so for which so just let me uh, play some video animated video out of that